Mm -mm -mm. I look like flavored water in the morning. What's up, you guys? So this is a little bit different video than what I normally do. It is for the outdoors. I think anybody who does fishing, archery, hunting, they got go on leases, they have their own lease, whatever, hog trapping, I think you need one of these. It's a welder, you need a weld machine. Now, if you don't do uh, welding as a profession, you don't need the big fancy welders, okay? You don't, I'm gonna tell you that right now. No, disclaimer here, I'm not a professional welder, so nothing that I say in here is absolute. But I'm gonna give you my honest opinion about the welder that I got, talk to you about the customer service, tell you what they did that was just freaking awesome, and uh, kind of go through some stuff. We got a box back here, the new one that they sent me that I haven't even opened up yet. I'm still using my other one. Um, <clears throat> kind of do a couple of passes with the flux core, a couple of passes with the stick, and uh, kind of let you see the capability of what they have. Now these are uh, 110 or 220. And I'm gonna tell you right now on the 110, I may do it, I may not. I may switch over to 110 and crank her up and weld the piss out of her and show you that she never even uh, pops the breaker like most of your old school welders used to do. But anyway, we'll get back here, we'll kind of go through this. This is gonna be not a very great unboxing. This is just basically showing you everything that comes with it. Just plain and simple, plain Jane. Again, I'm not a professional welder, so I can't give you the whole professional welder talk. I don't know all the amps and the bolts and the blah, 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 blah. I've been welding since, uh, for about, I don't know, since I was in high school. Always a little hobby, you always find something around the house you can repair or, you know, like Tim the old, old tool, Tim the tool man, Dan, always wanting to, uh, 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 let's beef it up. So anyway, welding's a blast, man. There's some other tools that I'll show you that I've gotten along the way since I've gotten that uh, welder that I think's uh, very handy too. But anyway, let's get back here, pull it out of the box and show you what it's made of. All right, so <clears throat> first thing out of the box, we'll go ahead and just pull the welder itself. A Zuno 200 amp four in one welder. So it comes with flux core. Uh, you can gas uh, wire weld with it, stick weld, and you can also TIG weld. Um, I'm probably never even gonna get to the options of the TIG and uh, the gas weld, uh, even though that's what we always used to do. I just don't want extra gas bottles laying around. This is mainly something that I have that I can make good repairs, good welds. I can throw it in the back of my truck with a generator, be a mini portable welder and uh, do some things with it. Now, right out of the box, like I said, you get this. It's a good looking rig, man. This is one of the ones I liked about it too. I just like the color of it. It's got that, I don't know, it's kind of like a grayish. It's got the blue and the black. I'll uh, zoom here in a minute and kind of show you all the controls in the front and the cool features it has for people who don't really know a whole lot about wire welding. Wire welding can get tricky with your heat and your wire speed. If you don't know anything about it at all, it can take you a while to set up, but I'm gonna show you what this uh, welder does to prevent that. So you get adapter plug, okay? Welding plug, uh, throwing your 50 amp 220 to reduce down to the 110. And believe it or not, I know what's weird. You thought that it probably would have had the hard plug of the 50 amp to come down to the 110. But talking with some people who know electricity, they said it's actually easier to go from 110 up than to bring something down. I don't know. They give you your, just a standard wire feed lead right here. Good, stiff, does the job. Comes with your actual wire lead itself. Um, I'll tell you a little bit more a while ago what actually started this whole thing of getting this replaced. The machine didn't even need to get replaced. I'll show you what, uh, what uh, I actually needed to get replaced, but anyway, this is a little bit different than most of your wire welders. If you go on Amazon, you're looking for the Lincolns and stuff like that. It's a different setup. You know, I will zoom in and show you a little bit, but it's a little bit different. I actually found out, or I actually found the replacement parts after Azuno did all this. I started digging a little bit harder. Uh, comes with the ground. Now we'll say this about the ground. You may want to, and this is a standard Again, I'm not a professional welder. I forget the uh, the name of the mail end. You know, you, you you plug it in, turn it. I forget the name of this. It's it's standard uh, with all welders. So 
The one thing I would say you probably want to upgrade, if not, you're going to be uh, changing this point out on this ground a lot. It's not a very heavy wire. And what happens is if you're doing some good heat, this gets hot, that winds up melting on that little uh, clamp right there. You got to cut it off, redo it. Come on, man. This thing was 300 bucks. Originally they were 350, they knocked them down to 279. I just happened to buy them on a sale like that. Uh, I think they're still down at 279. Uh, but when they go back up to their price, the 350, uh, you can't beat it for this price. I don't think you can. Comes with some hose, air hose to connect to the back of the machine. If you want to do anything with gas weld. And of course it comes with a few consumables you know, your tips, stuff like that, your wheels for changing out your wire size in here, which I'll go over that with you in a second. Uh, <clears throat> comes with some huh, little uh, tools for your tips, changing out your tips, and some consumables for your tips, and uh, probably the best wire brush I've ever seen in my life. No, I'm just kidding. This sucks. But anyway, that's the welder in a nutshell. Very simple. Uh, let me get around here and grab the camera and we're going to kind of go over get in a little bit tighter and show you the machine itself All right, so here's the machine itself. Like I said, I hate how it does that on camera um, <clears throat> It's an excellent machine for somebody who's just looking to get into welding Someone who had you know pretty novice uh, even people with some even good experience on it professionals can use this thing man I, It's it's very simple very simple to use so up here little storage compartment for your consumables um your little change out the wheels on the side for your different size of wire um now this is the cool part in here when you get into here uh, it's blinking i hate how it does it on camera right now i'm set on 70 and it's 16.4 that's all your feed uh with your wire weld now this is what i was talking about we're set on mig 2 so let me just give you the rundown you have a mig 2 which is standard when you pull the trigger and you hold it, it welds. Let it go, quits welding. Right there where it says MIG 4T, put it on there. When you pull the trigger, it just stays wire welding, just constant feeds until you pull the trigger again to stop. For people who put them on them turners and they want to weld a pretty string around it, MMA, that's not for fighting. That's for your stick weld. And of course, you have TIG. Now you come over here, <clears throat> it's the cool part about it. If you want to adjust, uh, say you're on wire weld you're on the mig 2 uh you go to go to flux okay because you have co2 mix all that all that stuff is for your your gas here it says manual which you can set up your own um your own temperature with your own wire feed to fine tune it how you want to um 0 0.6 0 0.08 and 1.0 that's just your different wire sizes okay that's all that is so you go point uh 08 right here or 0.8 if you use an 030 and 035 wire 1.0 if you are using the 040 wire now you see where it says sink so anytime i turn this kind of sucks that's blinking but anytime i turn this oh i wish you could see that but it gives you a suggested wire speed basically you're not turning your your temp up and then over here your wire speed saying the same and you're getting some bad welds uh, it's popping on you it's not wanting to feed right uh, the sink is awesome. I, I, I can't, that's going to help a lot of people out. Now I have it plugged in just to 110 to show you the, the uh, power. Right here you have a spot that says 110, 220, and uh, your overheat. I have welded on this thing since <clears throat> the beginning of February, and I've welded on it hard, hard. And it's never overheated. It's got a constant fan that works back there. It tells you it's for all day usage. They'll all say that, but this thing has worked flawlessly my friend flawlessly so come down here to the ground this little ground lead right here if you're using flux core it stays in here if you are using gas it'll go here uh, when you're running your stick weld this will come out your ground will go in here and your stick side will go in here pretty simple just like all the basic welders now here is the the wire uh, the wire lead how it plugs in what it looks like i told you it's not common like some of the most of the others that you'll see, uh, your Lincolns and your Millers and stuff. So it, this is not a compatible piece for them. But let me take this cap off. Damn it. Okay, let me take this cap off and show you what the end of this wire feed looks like. So some of you who know a lot of welders know exactly what this is. 
I did not. It's something I've never seen before, okay? Where your wire passes through, um, you've got your electrodes fit here and then for your gas. But that's it. Now that's what prompted the whole thing of what I'm about to tell you on this machine. So when you're doing flux core, you don't need this tip. This tip right here is for shielding the gas when you're using gas. You don't need this, okay? Now, if you're someone who goes back and forth between flux core and, uh, you know, the MIG, the wire gas weld, you probably want to keep this on. What it does, not only does it help the gas concentrate to the tip where it goes, where it needs to go, uh, but this also protects all this rare, because this is what you call live, okay? Once you pull that trigger, this is all ground out, this is live. So if any of this touches uh, the metal that you're welding on, it's going to arc off and uh, eventually get all nasty and... Um, if it, especially if it plugs up the little ports, the gas ports right here, it's not going to work very good if you go back to gas welding. Again, like myself, I do not gas weld. I don't want the gas weld. Uh, I actually think that this does a pretty enough bead without it having to be gas. Uh, I like flux core too. It's always windy out here. Um, flux core is the best for places with windy conditions. It really is. Look it up. I'm not making this up. So what started this whole thing operator error what i did i'm going to grab the other one to show you real quick i had this sitting on the table walked by tripped over the wire and it's been used a lot so it's been you know hot cool hot and cool a little bit brittle well it broke off it broke off probably about right there has about three or four threads left in it barely anything hanging right to screw a new tip back in couldn't get a hold of a zuno um at all so i actually had to go through them through Amazon. It's kind of weird, but it's okay. Um, I think one of the main reasons they did what they did was because really, in, in when you buy it and you get the instruction manual, it doesn't give you um, any parts list on what this uses. Okay, uh, again, I, I didn't know exactly what these pieces right here, I know they're replaceable. Uh, I just didn't know what size it was. I was looking, didn't know what word to type in on Amazon. Wound up being 15 AK is what the replacements are. Found all that at after I went through this stuff with Ozuno because they uh, sent that back to me and told me that's your replacement part. That's what you're looking for. Anyway, and there's a lot of welders out there that use that particular replacement part. So let me show you what I actually broke. So what I actually broke was this part right here. And you see how it's not as long as the other one. And when it broke, compare it, get this tip off. You see the length in the two, the differences? Okay. When this broke, like I said, it broke down uh, probably about a half an inch. And I have just enough threads to uh, thread it back in. Now, some of you are saying, why don't you just leave the nozzle on? <sighs> the nozzle is a pain in the ass. <clears throat> it's To me, it's just hard to see without. Now, they sell nozzles, uh, flux core nozzles, uh, but I can't find a flux core nozzle to fit the 15 AK tip. Most of them are for your Lincoln, uh, your Millers, and it's a high temp polymer plastic, whatever it is, and it comes down and it covers, it shields all this. I've bought like, I can't tell you how many I've ordered. I probably got 10 or 15 of them in there. I've tried from every site and none of them ever fit right, but they are a high temp. I've had some on there that I've kind of like, uh, you know, I just, and uh, they just fall off. But anyway, so when I called them, uh, finally got a hold of them and said, hey, man, how do I get one of these tips? Uh, they said, don't worry about it. We're going to send you a whole new welder. They said, the welder's fine. Nothing's wrong with the machine, okay? Uh, this tip broke, and I want to replace it. They said, we got a new one coming your way. Within three days, it was at the house. So I can't say enough about Ozuno and the customer service. They, they, they knocked it out of the park. Not only does this machine weld awesome, but customer service, if you've got any issues... You ain't got to worry about it. I mean, they're going to, uh, I'm not going to say they're going to do that all the time. I think one of the reasons, in my opinion, that they did this was because knowing that they didn't have any information on there and it was, you know, people were going to have a hard time. I think this was, uh, this is my opinion. I think this was a, hey, you know what? We didn't give any information. We're just going to send you a new welder. They didn't want the old welder back. So now I've got two. I'm not going to use this one until something ever happens to that one. Or I'll just leave this one hooked up here throw this in the truck with my with my uh, uh, generator and go do some side work now what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna put a couple of uh, we're gonna set it up we're gonna set the, the old one up 
I don't make a couple passes, like I said, with the wire. I have 030 wire in here. Uh, the 035 works great. It's a thicker wire, and the 040 works great as well. But the thicker they are is one of your downfalls with flux cores. It's a lot of splatter, okay? Spatter, splatter, whatever you want to call it. BBs everywhere. Uh, they actually sell a spatter spray, a splatter spray, but even though it is a little bit messy, the BBs are actually easy to come off. You just take a minute and just take a file or something or just something with a hard edge to actually scrape right off. But the 030 uh, just makes, in my opinion, a, a cleaner weld, okay? Again, if you want to go with the 035 or the 040, you can. They're strong welds. They just get a little bit dirtier. And then all the, uh, you get all the carbon, what I call carbon build. It's like a gun. You shoot a bunch, you get all that build up. Well, I'll show you what I'm talking about after I make the weld. So let me get <clears throat> the welder set up. We'll make a couple passes, and I'm going to show you what these things are capable of doing. Now, with these, uh, I'm going to do a little wire weld here first with the flux core. Uh, the flux core wire that I used is just from Yes Welder on Amazon. does pretty good. I've done some reviews. I know Harbor Freight carries some. Um, but I did a lot of reviews, and people really like this, this Yes Welder brand. And it's done good for me. I've had no problems. I even have uh, my hoods yeah, that are Yes Welder. So I don't normally wear all these big old... Uh, gloves but i'm gonna be welding down inside some channel iron and uh i've been burned too many times in the past couple weeks so i like when i'm using my 030 i like between 70 and 80 amps i've gone up to 90 uh, if i really need to burn some in to uh, some quarter inch um, we actually have quarter inch here but i'm gonna i'm gonna put it probably put it right in the middle of 75 again with the sink it gives you it automatically adjusts your feed uh to help you if you want to fine tune stuff, I've never tried to fine tune it because it works fine. It's never given me any reason to try anything different. So I'm going to do that and we'll grab some couple 7018 rods and burn them in. And I'll just show you what the thing does, man. You guys can make your own evaluation and uh, see what you think about them. All right, I don't have a shield. Uh, I don't have a filter for my camera. So I'm going to go ahead and throw a, throw a bead on here. Watch your eyes. All right, this is all I've got of my wire brush. I guess the one that come with it's better, huh? Clean it off a little bit. Get you over here. All right, so I'm gonna show you the weld real quick. Don't judge me. Can't really see inside there. I need to adjust my hood a little bit. Kind of going crooked, but it welds good. I'm gonna weld another one with it right after that, and then we'll grab the stick and show you what it does. So it ain't too bad, ain't too shabby, okay? Like I said, I was going off center there, I couldn't see. Um, but it's a good weld. Now this is the spatter I'm talking about. Now let me show you literally all it takes to clean that off. Take your file or something and you'll scrape the BBs right off. Then you can come back if you want to, which, you know, a wire brush does good, but it doesn't do as good as a wire wheel on your grinder. And I'm going to show you the difference now. Look how it looks with just with wire brush. And when I hit it with the wire wheel in a minute, watch how good it looks. That was 75. We're going to crank it down to 70. And just see the difference. Probably won't notice a whole lot of difference, but we'll do it anyway. Watch your eyes. Watch your eyes. Not bad. All this batter, you just take and grind off. Now, before anybody started complaining and bitching, these two pieces wasn't prepped. They were just stuck together with the weld thrown on them, okay? I didn't bevel the sides. I didn't really prep nothing. Just put them together to show you. 75, 70. Nah, what the hell? Let me do one on 80. See what 80 does. 80 amps. All right, so my damn wire wheel. Well, the short ones, kind of hard to get down in here, but I got it. But anyway, you can tell a bigger difference than when you're using just a wire brush. Obviously, the wire wheel is going to be better. But there's your 75 volt. There's your 70. And there's your 80. Obviously, your 80 looks a little bit better. Um, this is quarter inch steel. So I don't usually use 80. We're usually welding, welding on that one eighth. And when you're doing that, your 75 and your 80 actually look more like that. But anyway. All right. So anyway, it's a good weld. Okay, it's doing its job, it's penetrating, uh, it's a strong weld. 
Now let me get a couple 7018 rods to kind of walk you through on how we switch this out. I told you a while ago, but show you how easy and how fast it is. Number one thing you want to do, make sure you cut the machine off. It does have a little bit of delay. It has a cool down uh, time on it uh, with that fan. So we'll let that cool down just a second. It'll shut off. <clears throat> when it shuts off, take your, your ground. Okay. Take it off. This little loop right here I told you guys about, take this off and it's just gonna hang here. It's not gonna do anything, okay? Take your ground, plug it in there. Take your stinger for your wire weld, plug it in the positive. Turn the machine on. Most important part, don't forget this part. I've done it, I can't tell you how many times. <laughs> it sucks. Make sure you come back up here and change it to MMA. That's your stick weld. So push the button twice. You're on MMA. I'm set up on 75 amps right now uh, with the 7018s. Um, let me grab you one real quick. What did I do with them? 7018s. Okay, 7018, they're a 330 second rod. They burn good. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna weld on the backside. Uh, on the inside in there, it's a little bit dark and I hadn't adjusted my Thing, so I kept running sideways. I don't care. Anyway, 7018 rod, 332nd. Uh, run a couple beads on here and uh, I don't know, see what it looks like. Okay, a little bit of a fast bead. Let's knock that off. Not bad. Hell, I'll bring it up to you. Not bad. I'll zoom in on a minute. I'm gonna weld another one. I'm gonna crank it up a little bit to 80 and uh, see what it does. You can keep this other hand of this arm really good in position. That makes a whole lot better. I mean, I'm pretty good, you know, welding offhand or just straight, but anyway, scrape this off. Oh yeah, that's money, dude. All right, take this off and show you what we got. I don't want to drag the video out too much. So that was the first weld at 75. You really have a good, a good uh, anchor, right? Making excuses, I guess. This is the second one. Now again, it's just a butt weld. There's no, there's no bevel, there's no gap. So it's gonna be a little higher, but it's not a bad pass. That is me and it's not the machine in it, but it still welds good. All right, so I just kind of want to show you, but I've been doing my projects with this thing. This is just, doesn't even scratch the surface. So I've been welding on Oklahoma Joe, beefing her back up, I'm gonna wind up selling her. Welded a collector, which I thought was pretty cool. I never seen one of those uh, on the Oklahoma Joe. Um, the wheels off you know i've got to regrind all those but the welding man this thing does light may not be very good but this thing does awesome all right i mean it of course here's my hog trap i hadn't finished yet i've had to put it on the back burner um got to get it fixed though uh re-welding the uh the fire box just because you know they're not welded that great from the factory uh re-welding it sealing everything off getting that done making it tough I will finish the Oklahoma Joe probably this week, a little bit at a time. I'm gonna put that firebox back on here with the bolts to hold it up and I'm gonna weld it solid all the way around. Uh, weld the hinges up real nice and tough, but yeah. So this thing is awesome, man. This thing, it can do a lot of different stuff. And look, I'll show you some pictures here uh, in a second of some things I've been doing for some people. Actually welding, um, breathing air bottles uh racks uh making racks for the breathing air bottles uh on trailers uh for a company so you know i think i gotta tell you it's been going great i originally bought this so just something for me at the house to have buddy talked me into building some rocket stoves those took off like nobody's business my other brother which or my other buddy which is his brother 
he's a competition barbecue guy. And he's like, hey man, you gotta start welding uh, charcoal boxes and uh, uh, wood, uh, I'm not sorry, charcoal uh, grates, baskets and wood baskets for these guys and these big smokers. And I thought, okay, I'll try one. Put a couple on Facebook. Every time I do that, my phone will not stop. I will work nonstop. And I'm gonna be honest with you, you know, if you had the capability, if a man or a woman, whatever, wants to, if they can invest a couple hundred bucks into a welding machine, the sky's the limit. You can do odds and ends and stuff. At one time, we were making four or $500 a week extra after work, coming home. And everything me and my son did, I split right down the middle. Uh, all the upgrade stuff, I'd come out of my half. You know what I mean? But, uh, I mean, this dude's got a lot of money sitting in his bank now uh, for just doing this and learning the craft. And like I said, you don't have to go out and buy the most expensive machine to start learning. If you want to, that's great on you. Hey, if I had the money, I probably would too, if I had the space. Uh, but also something else I want to show you right over here. That is a plasma cutter. And let me tell you something. That plasma cutter, it's a hyanide. Okay, it goes up to 45 amps. Same thing, 110 to 220. I have cut with that thing on 110, uh, eighth inch plate never popped a fuse um as long as you have air supply with that uh, it comes with the regulator and everything i think i paid 200 bucks i'll leave the description for both of these machines in the description uh but that thing screw a torch yeah there's things that you still need a torch for if you're a major fabricator to heat stuff and bend it and all that but uh that thing cuts up to uh half inch it says it'll come up to half inch i've never had to try it but it cuts through quarter inch like butter at 40, I think it's like 40 or 41, not even the highest rating. And I'm gonna tell you right now, the number one reason, I could have bought a cheaper welder. I didn't need to go 200 amps. Um, but I'm the kind of person, if I can afford it and everything goes right, stars line up. If I'm gonna be using half of that, okay, let me just tell you, the highest I've had that machine is to 120 amps. That's when I had the, the 040 wire. Um, I had it at 120 amps. This thing is maxed out at 200. I'm never gonna get to 200. I don't need to, okay? I want something that I know has a lot of power, but I'm never gonna have to use it so it's there. You know what I mean? I'm, I'm not overexerting this thing. Uh, I'm not pushing it to the limit. That's, to me, I think that's with everything you do, whether it's welding, you're putting a axle under a trailer, get the biggest one you can get that you can afford that makes sense to where you're not overexerting. You know, these guys build these trailers and they put a 1,200 pound axle under it and they say, oh my, the loads on there is only gonna be like 800 pounds. Okay, that's great. But it's bouncing, so it's shock loading. You know, I, I don't wanna go into it all day long, but that's the reason I bought this machine, 200 amp. I'll never get that close, never. And something I did not show y'all, and I need to show you right now, was uh, how to change a wire out in this wire capacity. So let me open that up and show you real quick. On the side, open it up. This will hold a 10 pound reel or a two pound reel. 10 pound reel, you have this big uh, attachment here. It actually screws backwards. You take that off and you actually slide the two, pin, uh, two pound reel in there and it's got an adapter for that. Just got my little wrench in there to so tighten that up. Um, when you tighten these, this wire on here, you don't want it too tight, okay? If you have it too tight, it's hard to drag through here and that all coincides with this little tensioner too. If you over tension this thing, what happens is this is flux core. For those of you who don't know, uh, I'm gonna break it down as simple as like this. It's flux core, so with the welding rod, you have the flux over the top of it. That's what keeps the oxygen away from your weld. Okay, oxygen is your enemy when it comes to welding. Gas, the gas pushes the oxygen away. With flux core, it's that simple. It's, it's a core, a flux, right? So as you're welding, that's why you saw that kind of dirty. As you're welding, that, that if you tighten that too much, believe it or not, it'll leave teeth marks in that wire and it's crushing that flux and it's not making uh, a steady bead of flux. How do I understand this? In other words, you can start getting that break in that flux and it's gonna be spitting and sputtering. It's not gonna make a good weld uh, no matter how you adjust it. So, and it's, it's a trial and error thing, it really is. But it's also a common sense thing. You only need just enough tension for when you pull that trigger it grabs and takes it off. And again, you wanna make it towards tension enough that this doesn't start backfeeding and spooling off, right? Cause that will happen, just ask me how I know. Overall, this machine, man, if I had to give it between one and a 10, honest to God, 
no, I'd say 9.5. It would have had a 10 if the, uh, if the stinger for the wire welder was a little bit tougher and the ground had a, I don't know if it's better wire or just a better uh, ground clamp at the end. But again, like I said, they're universal. So you can uh, go get you upgraded one if you want. You can even get you a longer wire. Now, what I did, I bought a 25 foot or 15 foot extension cord there from my 50 amp that we put in to run out to weld. I actually had this thing on the end of a 100 foot 110 cord when I was doing some, uh, some stuff on the other side of the house and I was welding it right at, uh, I think it was 70 or 75 amps. Wasn't for a real long time, probably I was out there probably 15, 20 minutes worth of work. Never got hot, never blew the fuse. So I can't say enough good things about the welder as far as how it works, uh, how it welds, um, the quality of welds. Again, I'm not the best welder, but I guarantee you 100% my welds aren't gonna break because I'm very OCD. If I have for one reason have any doubt, I will grind it out and do it again. Again, these little test welds, if we were doing this for structure or you know doing this that would have been beveled that would have been uh prepared a little better this is just kind of show you the bead uh, that you can run and honestly for 300 dollars 279 now uh with customer service that will that replace the whole machine for me just for a tip being broke i mean come on appreciate you guys sticking around this long i hope i can persuade you these are one of the things that i wrote the views i hope i can persuade you to buy one of these little machines i get nothing out of it i'm not affiliated with them Appreciate y'all guys sticking around watching the video. We got some more stuff coming pretty soon. It's just been too damn hot. But we're coming at it. We're coming hot. And you guys are going to be there for the ride. Appreciate y'all. Every chance you get, wet a line, let her know, fly. Put some rounds down range. And then between that, let me do some welding. See y'all later.